Hey cruisers, I'm Sherry with Cruise Tips TV. It is wonderful to have you here for our weekly vlog. Right now we are filming on Super Bowl Sunday. Hope you're all enjoying the game, having a great day. We wanted to first give you guys a really quick programming note. We are going to try to do something different and that would be next Saturday, which I wanna say it's February 10th. Does that sound about right to you, February 10th? six, seven, eight, nine, 10, maybe the 11th, Saturday the 11th, we are going to try to do a live stream on YouTube as our weekly vlog. And we would love to have you join us. It will probably be around the late morning before lunchtime Pacific time, but we will keep you closely posted. You're gonna to need to follow us on social media to make sure that you know if it's gonna happen. Um, we're still trying to figure out the technology. So we'd love to have you join us there. Log in live on YouTube, ask us some questions. So. We'll be sure to announce it on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter this week if we're gonna make it work, but we'd love to have you join us. If you would like to leave me a comment below and let me know if you think you could make it, that would be awesome so I can make sure that enough people are gonna to join. And we will hopefully see you there. On a related note, we wanna thank everybody so much for continuing to follow us on social media. We've been getting those followers up a little bit here on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, and we would really love your help helping us to get to a thousand followers on each. We are so close. I think on every single one of those platforms, we're right around the 900 area and we're really itching to get to a thousand. So if you haven't already followed us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, please do so this week. That would be awesome. Wanted to congratulate the winner of our packing cube giveaway. Um, Christina T won the packing cubes. Good job, way to go. We will have more giveaways coming. We're looking into some more products for you all. We wanna make sure that they are tested by us first and foremost, because you know that our integrity is the most important thing in the world to us, and we'll keep you posted. So again, watch on social media, watch here on YouTube, and we'll be sure to give you an announcement when we do another giveaway. We have um, a ton of updates for you on the NCL bidding process. You guys are amazing. What I love so much about this community is how you guys get information to me as fast as you possibly can when we need it. We did that episode on um, the um, Norwegian bidding process and on the Norwegian new Latitudes Rewards program. And there were a ton of updates that came after all of that was released. So let's start with talking a little bit about some more information that you guys shared with me on the Norwegian Latitudes program. At least three of you, Cruising with Wheels, Steve Roth, and Tango Family 15, reached out to me and let me know something super important about the new Norwegian Latitudes program that's changing. And that is kind of a takeaway from the program. That is that you used to be able to get double loyalty points if you booked your cruise nine months in advance, additional loyalty points, and now you can no longer do that. So Cruising with Wheels let us know that effective, it looks like if you booked your sailing on Norwegian prior to February 3rd, 2017, you're still gonna get the double points. But if you booked after that point, you are going to be losing the ability to earn double points. So they have added a lot of awesome things to the loyalty program, but they have taken something away as well. It looks like there's been some changes to the tier requirements too. Tango Family 15 let me know that they've kind of raised some of the tier requirements, making it a little harder to get to them. So it's not always <laughs> wine and roses with these changes and we really appreciate you all letting us know what you know about the program. That's what this channel is all about. It's a community. It's not always good news. Sometimes it's you know not so great news and sometimes it's opinion. So thank you all so very much for sharing that with us. Wanted to also let you guys know a little bit more about the bidding process. In our last vlog, we talked about the fact that Norwegian was giving you the opportunity to bid on cabin upgrades. And we had said, hey, if anybody has ever gotten a letter or a bid opportunity from Norwegian, we want to hear about it. We want to see about it, see it. For example, if you got a letter or an email saying, hey, we're opening up bidding, we want to know what it says. So. A couple of you sent us some awesome information. Um, we're gonna start with PJ Gustafson. PJ let us know that his brother um, got the invite to bid and said that the bid is an amount per person starting at $25. So you'll get, you know, you get the opportunity to start at $25 and go up from there. And you also will be told throughout the process of entering your bid amount if it's a poor, fair, or good chance of getting the upgrade. So that's really cool. So thank you, PJ, for sharing that with us. 
Brian David sent us, you guys, the exact invitation from NCL that you will see. Rather than reading you all the whole thing, what I would recommend that you do is go back to our last vlog where we talked about this and look for the comment from Brian David. Um, Brian got the invitation about 90 days before the cruise for the bid and shares the entire email. And um, it looks like he didn't end up getting the upgrade on Norwegian Escape because it was fully sold out, but the letter is really interesting and you should definitely check it out. Brian also shared with us that you would find out if your bid is accepted or rejected only 48 hours um, before sailing, you guys. So you really, or excuse me, before boarding. So you really don't find out until the very, very, very last minute there. So that is um, very interesting stuff. So go look at the notes from the comments from our last vlog if you want to see what the invitation email looks like and also maybe kind of the rejection for lack of a better word that's horrible but the email that says unfortunately we weren't able to accept your bid offer can be viewed there as well and it's very helpful so brian thank you so much for sharing that with us that was really generous of you we really appreciate it and i know that all of our um our subscribers will as well we're going to now get into our normal weekly question and answer section and my son is going to read us our first question today. Are you ready, big guy? Yeah. What do you have to say today? So, the first question is by Lacey Lashia. So what she says is, she says, hey Sherry, this could be on another vlog. But did you know that the Carnival Vista will be docking out of Galveston between 2018 and 2019? I can't wait to get on it. And that is all. Nice. Thank you very much. You did a good job. You're welcome. <laughs> Lacey, we're so excited for you. Yeah, Carnival Vista is going to Texas. I can only imagine that everyone who subscribes to our channel in Texas is going crazy right about now. This is the most exciting news ever to get a brand new, basically brand new ship over there. So stoked for you. I hope you book in 2018 and 2019. Please be sure to let us know how it goes. We would love to hear from you. So we're going to go on to some other questions this week. I had so much fun reading and responding to all of your questions, you guys, within the last few weeks. They were really interesting and really different. We had a lot of trends um, in the questions, which is so interesting. One of the trends this time was, get this, swollen feet when you get on a cruise. Now, I don't know about any of you, but um, I've had some swelling before on a cruise too. I don't know about my feet, but I feel like, I usually feel like I just kind of get swollen overall. And I always assumed it was maybe something in the water or it was maybe the extra cocktails that I was drinking or maybe the content of the salt on the cruise. I don't really know. But Keith Fox said, um, another topic suggestion is swelling feet. Mine swelled so much. And then we got a comment from Nadine Stormy during the same week saying, hey, I just went on my first cruise and my feet swelled up on the second day and all I could wear is flip-flops. This is common. Have you experienced this? So what we want to know is if any of you guys have read any official studies on this matter. I did Google it and found a really interesting comment from someone on a forum, but I couldn't substantiate it. It essentially said something about the fact that your equilibrium is affected when you get on a cruise. So it's actually the motion of the cruise does something inside of your brain that sends some message to your stomach that then sends like liquids and water to your extremities. I have no idea if that is substantiated. I would love to know if there are any doctors, medical students, um, experts on this kind of thing. Please send us an article, leave comments below, enlighten us on the feet swelling because I think it's a fascinating topic and you never know, maybe we can do an entire episode on it. Another thing that we wanted to do is ask you guys to comment um, this week on how do you deal with problems on a ship when you have them. Uh, one of our subscribers, Keith Fox, had some issues on a cruise and um, ended up uh, having some problems with their room steward and some of the restaurant service and things like that. And we just wanna kind of generally pull you guys and ask you, what do you do when you have a problem? Do you go to the customer service manager? Do you remove the gratuities? Do you leave a note? What? How do you handle it? Leave it in the comments below and maybe we could consider an, a future episode on that topic alone. So thank you very much, Keith. Um, we need to help out Kim Gibbs, you guys. Listen to this. Kim is going on Golden Princess on a, wait for it, 
75 day cruise. I mean, that's almost like a world cruise here, Kim. Come on, you're gonna have a blast. And Kim says, I need all the help I can get. They're leaving Australia in May, which is their fall season, um, and returning in the winter, going to Asia, Alaska, Canada, America, and the Hawaiian and Polynesian islands in the summertime. So we need to help Kim. If anybody's been on a world cruise or a really long cruise on Princess, give her some tips on that type of cruising. Um, Kim, my advice to you would be to pack a very good supply of your own detergent, whatever detergent you like, and use the self-serve laundromats on board so that you can pack a little bit less. Um, that will save you some money. Of course, paying for the self-serve laundromats on board isn't that expensive. I want to say on my last Princess Cruise, it was something like $3 per wash load and $3 per dry load or something, but the detergent and softener add up. I think they're over a dollar a piece. So if you pack that, you can save some money and have your favorite detergent as well. I know Target sells um, the travel size Tide packets in their sample size bin, their travel bin, so you should check those out. So Kim, hopefully our subscribers will leave you some great comments below. We also need to help LaShawn, everyone. LaShawn is going on a Disney cruise, Disney fantasy, with her three-year-old and wants some tips on what to do with a three-year-old in ports of call to keep him entertained. He's the kind of guy who likes water, running, jumping, and he has a lot of energy. So naturally, LaShawn, I'm going to tell you, take the little guy to the beach wherever you can, slather him with sunscreen, pop a hat on him, let him frolic in the waves and kick up his little feet. Maybe consider packing a very, very small, um, what do they call those? Uh, castle building kit, like those little sand toys. Maybe a teeny tiny little shovel and a rake and a little tiny bucket. He's three, he doesn't need anything fancy. You could even use a spoon and a cup off of the ship if you needed to. But when my little guy was little, he loved kind of playing in the dirt here and there. He, you know, he might, he didn't need anything fancy though. Buying him those ridiculous amounts of sand toys was kind of silly because he would just gravitate towards, you know, like my Coke can and do something with that. So don't worry about buying too much, but I would get him to a beach environment anytime that you can with nice relaxed waves and let him go nuts. But I'm sure that our subscribers will um, offer some other tips. You also asked if the youth clubs were enough to keep him entertained during sea days. On Disney, kids programs are top notch. I'm going to say yes to that. Not every cruise line necessarily is going to offer you quite as many options for children who are that young, three, but on Disney, I think you're going to be able to keep him entertained the whole time as long as he wants to be in the children's club. Every child is very different. Sometimes you'll take them and they won't want to go back, but for no reason other than they they want to be with their family. So good luck with that. Please let us know how it goes and please stay tuned for an episode that we have coming up very soon on cruising with children. It is an all subscriber inspired episode where we asked our subscribers to contribute and you're going to get a lot of really great tips from that. So please stay tuned. All right. We have some tips from our subscribers. One of my favorite things every week is to put, to kind of run through our YouTube comments and see what you guys can offer to our subscribers. Um, Jim Bowish, uh, suggested a little further expansion on what, you know, medical problems. A couple of weeks ago on our vlog, someone suggested taking a medical face sheet, sheet on board. And um, this cruiser, Jim, suggested that in addition to that, that you take an extra four to seven days of medication with you on vacation, as you never know what might happen with delays or if you need to be into a, in a hospital. I think that's really good advice because it's so true. Your flight could be canceled on the way back and you may not have um, enough medication with you. So I think that's a really awesome tip. Thank you, Jim Boish. Also, Don's Family Vacations had a tip for us on um, passport wallets. And Don said, if you do pick up a wallet for the passport, make sure it has RFID blocking including in it. There are places that people have set up a small chip reading machine along cruise port exits and try to read passport chips and credit cards. So for your safety, definitely want to take that advice from Don's family vacations. That's about it for us right now. We have so much exciting stuff in store for you all over the next few weeks. We're filming a ton of episodes over on our cruise gear channel. It's not all beauty boxes right now. So if you like cruise tech and other types of gear, please be sure to subscribe to our cruise gear channel, which you can find right here on our YouTube channel. And Leave us your comments below. Your likes, subscriptions, and comments all help us so, so much. And we thank you very, very much for sticking with us and being a part of our community. Until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Bye. Don't forget, 2017 is going to be super, super fun. Is it? We got a lot of fun stuff planned. Are you going to tell me what this fun stuff is, honey? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
I think my husband wants this year to be really fun, you guys. We're it's gonna be. We really are. We're trying to reinvent ourselves all the time. And we do that because we want you to have fun. And like I always say, we want this to be an escape for you. So stay tuned for some of my husband's fun ideas that I haven't heard about yet. <laughs> Bye. Who's your own tweet? Hey, click me to subscribe. Do you want to say bye, honey? No. no. Bye. <laughs>